And we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Animation Commendation for another exciting episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire Animation Edition Season 6. This is Ibrahim, aka Mark Brown, and I'm here returning for round two. Film lover, animation lover, writer, Mr. Stanford Clark himself. How are you, sir? Hi, doing well, Ibrahim. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. And for people who um, missed the first episode or haven't seen you before, can you, can you introduce yourself and your relationship with animation? Yes. So, uh, I, as, 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 uh, Ibrahim said, I'm an animation, uh, fan. I have a movie blog it's called movies past and present.com. So, uh, I, you know, mostly I love, I mean, I really love movies of any, of, of any type, type given the title of, of my blog, but I love animation. I was a, I was a writer for the animation fascination website for a while. I think that's where I got, uh, Ibrahim and I became friends. Yeah. I think, I think that's how we met. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Anyway, so I'm happy to be here, and thanks again for having me. You're welcome, and thanks for coming on. And for anyone that's new to this, this is a 12-question multiple-choice game show about anything in the field of animation. As long as Mr. Clark keeps getting questions right, he goes higher up the ladder. Once he gets one wrong, that's the end of the game. And he leaves with the last number of points from the last safe haven. He has three lifelines to help him, 50-50. gets rid of two wrong answers, a phone or friend if he chooses. He can call someone for help or an Ask the Expert. And this season, our expert is blogger and animation lover, Mr. Andrew Garrison, who actually won the game show last season. We've asked him all the questions this season, and Stanford could see how he answered and decide if he wants to go with that or not. And this is the penultimate um, episode of this season. There's only one more after this. So will Mr. Clark uh, end this game with a million? Let's wait and find out. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Sir, are you ready to pl play millionaire? I'm ready. Let's do this thing. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to share my screen with you. Can you see the millionaire yes, screen? I can. Thank you. Awesome. This year, ladder of points. Remember, the yellow ones are the benchmarks. Once you come to those, you can't lose them no matter what. And like I explained before, you're coming in with 250,000 points from round one. And right now the lead is 375,000. So you need to tie with 125 at least on okay. this game. So there's no walking away early for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or I'm toast. <laughs> exactly. And everyone else is an Andrew Garrison. Um, uh, Sanford has read this already, but everyone else can check out his blog, The Movie Guy and Friends, and Andrew, the movie guy 714wordpresscom All right, let's go. And remember, nothing's final till you say final answer. Okay. 500 points. What type of animals are the titular characters in the animated 1992 film, Tom and Jerry the Movie? Are they A, a snake and a mongoose? B, a cat and a mouse? C, a shark and a goldfish? Or D, a falcon and mole? You know, I can safely say that uh, Tom and Jerry, who, you know, I not only have we seen this this movie, but all those, sh all those shorts from way back in the day, right? are a cat and a mouse. So I'm going to go with B, cat and mouse, final answer. You seem confident about that. Are we starting off on a good <laughs> I hope note? I'm, I hope I am. <laughs> Your answer is wrong. It was Snake and a Mongoose. Okay, I'm kidding. Yeah, it's the <laughs> Falcon and Wall. <laughs> Andre, this movie gets a lot of flack, but um, I remember liking this a lot as a kid. And I, and I know a lot of people had an issue because in this movie, Tom and Jerry actually talk. And yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe it's because I, I probably might have seen, I, I don't think I've saw many car, Tom and Jerry shorts before seeing this movie. So maybe mm -hmm. that's my familiarity is with this movie, but I had no issue with the movie really. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's been years, it's been years since I've seen it, but right. I, I it's been, it. it's been years too. And that is a good point. Cause the classic shorts all, they, you know, they don't talk. It's all, you know, the, 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 the pantomime, but yeah, yeah. Uh, they'll, they're fun characters. So and if we'll I, take them any way we can get them, right? Exactly. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, they're making a Tom. There's a Tom and Jerry movie coming out. Yeah, I was going to say, mm -hmm. isn't there some kind of a hybrid movie? That's. Yeah. I think it was supposed to come out this year, but I think due to the pandemic, it it's it got, got pushed. pushed. Yeah, like everything. Like, like, like every movie. <laughs> yeah. I wonder what the, I, I I honestly don't know what's going to happen to cinemas in the in the next year. I know it's if they can get through these next few months. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's been rough all year, but yeah. Wow, that's just going to continue. For anyone watching this video in like 50 years from now, this is taking place during the, uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus. That's right, pandemic. right in the throes of it. Yeah. So this is a historical piece of, our, our, of um, that's right. evidence you're looking at. Exactly. <laughs> All right, sir, you're doing wonderful. The next one's 1,000 points. After, mind you, you get that wrong, you leave with nothing. I don't think it's going to happen, but just let me know. 1,000 okay. points. 
What is the English title of the animated 1988 Studio Ghibli film about two siblings struggling to survive during World War II? Is it Grave of the Foxes, Grave of the Woodpeckers, Grave of the Raccoons, or Grave of the Fireflies? You know, um, this this movie is really something. And uh, have you, it, it's, so uh, it's D, Grave of the Fireflies, <laughs> final answer. And this movie is so amazing and so devastating. I think it's the saddest animated film I've ever seen. Have you have you had a chance? Have you have you have you seen it? The answer is correct. So yeah. Oh, okay, good. Correct. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. It's like, I hope it's correct. I hope I'm not being too uh, <laughs> arrogant. No, 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 no worries. Uh, um, I did. I have seen this movie, and uh-huh. so I have a, a <laughs> an unpopular opinion about this film, and I think it's because I saw. I don't know if you saw the Japanese version, but I saw the English dub of this. Yes. And <laughs> I don't know if it's just the English dub, but I was not a fan of this movie. I didn't find it. It didn't. I think I found the girl character very annoying. <laughs> yeah. So, so I didn't, I don't know. I, I didn't get as sad as I, I didn't, I didn't get sad in this mm-hmm. movie and they didn't pull yeah, out because you'd be like ah, i can't stand this no exactly. i should see how that could be the case exactly so so you know, so this I, movie uh, yeah I, I i don't like it i'm sorry i oh no you're good i believe that i saw uh with you know it was it, with english subtitles so it was japanese with english okay. subtitles and you know i was just devastated by it um but i i hear you i mean boy if 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 any voice dubbed or not you know is super annoying that yes. really it affects it affects your enjoyment absolutely i think if i had to pick the saddest animated movie i've seen or not not exactly saddest but like the most not not de- like depressing or forlorn movie yes. there's a movie there's a british movie called when the wind blows have you ever seen it it came out in the 80s no. and it's it it's it, it features two um an elderly married couple voiced by john mills and i forget who voiced his wife and they're basically the only characters in the movie but it's about them it it takes place during like a a alternate reality where nuclear bombs have been dropped and they're trying their they've heard rumors that it has been dropped they're trying to do their best to adhere to whatever whatever the uk government has told them to do when that, that ever happened but I don't want to give too much away, but it's like, it, it's really, really sad. It's heavy. Yes. Yeah. Heavy. That's probably the good word. It's very heavy. Oh. I think you could find it, or I watched it on YouTube. Someone had uploaded it the whole oh, movie. Okay. So you could probably check it. I think it's When the Wind Blows. I, I think it would be very interesting to know your thoughts on that. I got to write that down. Okay. Yes. Thanks for the, thanks for the tip. You're welcome. Just just be prepared for some very heavy Yeah. Right for, <laughs> and it's not so much that I love, you know, I don't really love super sad movies, but I, I, I you know. I was like getting uh, tips from you, Ibrahim, so thank yeah. you. No, yeah, I'd love to know what you think about that. Okay. All right, sir. You're doing amazing. You have a thousand points, but let's get you higher. <laughs> Made it to a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Two thousand points. Which of the following animated Disney canon films takes place in England during the Middle Ages? C, The Sword in the Stone. B, 101 Dalmatians. C, The Jungle Book. Or D, The Great Mouse Detective. So uh, you've got three of the four films uh, from the Disney canon that are all set in England, but the only one that takes place during the Middle Ages is is the Sword and Stone. You know, clearly about about uh, the origins of King Arthur. So I'm going to go with A, Sword and the Stone. Final answer. You said A, Sword and the Stone. Final answer. Your answer is correct. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Don't point. think the great mouse detective. Yeah. <laughs> no, the great mouse detective was like uh, Victorian. Victorian era, yeah. And One Hundred Twelve Dimensions was one of the few Disney films that was in the modern era. Like it modern took, era. Was, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, modern for when it came out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For 60s, the sixties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think lighting was lighting the tramp in the modern era for that, or no, or, or know, was that? I think like it earlier? was more in in the thirties. Like it, yeah, or or earlier, kind of in the 1900s. Oh, okay, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think that I, I think that they're still using horse-drawn vehicles. True, true. That's, that, that's, that's think, a good point. Yeah, 
that there was there was no model t for us from what i yeah, remember that's right. <laughs> i'm just picturing you know the dog pound guy uh in a, i think he was a, you know, in a horse drawn because some kind of a horse drawn wagon if i'm not yeah. mistaken it's been a while for me yeah and this yeah, is likewise. good old um arthur ak war getting yes the sword there from he the is sword. this uh spoiler alert he actually pulls a sword from the pulls, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of this movie ibrahim I like it a lot. I don't know if it's because of nostalgia, but uh, it's it's. I, I like it more than most people do. It's actually on my favorites Disney animated. Oh, Disney cool. Films, okay. Yeah. My yeah. It, my my favorite scene in any Disney movie is is one of two scenes. It's either one the the climax in Robin Hood, or two it's the Wizard's duel in this. Yes, movie. <laughs> the Wizard's duel is just it knocks it out of the park. It's so good. Yeah. I, 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 I heard someone, I forget if it was an animator or someone say, say that the character animation in that is like amazing. Like if you could learn, I think that's like a course in itself. Yeah. Yeah. But, and now they're making a remake of that too. So we'll see, we'll see what's going to happen. Every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> right, sir. He got that right. Okay. Five thousand. Here we go. What's another Disney? Which of the following anime Disney canon films has not had an official Broadway musical adaptation? Has not. Is it A, Beauty and the Beast? B, Aladdin? C, The Lion King? Or D, Tangled? And again, just to, I'm, to clarify, I'm talking which doesn't, which hasn't had an official on Broadway musical. I'm not right. talking if they had a, something in the parks or something, something like that. Right, on the cruise ship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, uh, I have seen uh, the three that have had a Broadway adaptation in one place or another. Uh, so, so I've seen Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King. Um, I, my answer is going to be D, Tangled, because I have not final answer, and we can talk about it more a little bit. So, D, Tangled, final answer. Your answer is correct, and I think um, I think it was Andrew who actually pointed out to me this question. Um, uh, I, I, had, I had known this also, but I think Tangled has a musical on the cruise line. Yeah, I think Tangled right? has. <laughs> Something on, on 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 one of the cruise lines. Mm-hmm. So uh, thank you for clarifying yeah. that. But uh, yeah, it hasn't made it to the stage yet. I Probably. wonder if, if it will. It could, you know. Or we have Broadway know. stage. I'm, I'm still waiting for Hunchback to make it to Broadway. I'd love yeah, to see. Yeah, that's a good point. That's so so point. so you actually saw Beauty and the Beast on Broadway? I saw Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. And, yes, and uh, this was a few years ago. I was in New York City on a work trip. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you know the uh, the R and B singer Tony Braxton. Yes, but Tony Braxton was playing Bell. Yeah, I, so, I heard I heard about that. Yeah. yeah, and actually, it was very interesting. What I had read, I think they wrote they, had, they wrote a song for her. Is yeah, they wrote they wrote a song for her, mm-hmm. and then also they had to put the music in a different key, you know, different musical key, <laughs> to bring it down for oh, okay. her voice because she's got quite a low voice. And uh, but I loved it. I, she's not, you know, she wasn't necessarily the greatest actress in the world. But wow, she could sing, and it was just so fun to hear, kind of a different style of, of singer, you know, belt out these these songs yes. that I you know know and love. That's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't saw- remember who played the Beast, but but wow, she was she was so good. Nice. Yeah, I, I saw. I was lucky to see Lion King and Aladdin, not in Broadway, but in the West End in England. But Beauty oh. and the Beast, I never. I, I wish I could have seen that. Outstanding that you got to see those in London, dude. Exactly. That's when when I went to England, when I went to England, that was like that's on my list. I like you have to do that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Lion King. The, Lion King blew my mind. Man. Oh, the Lion King is just remarkable. I mm-hmm. saw that in New York. Actually, mm-hmm. I saw both of those, Aladdin and, and the Lion King in New York. But the Lion King also there you know, has had a, quite a few touring companies. One mm-hmm. came through Salt Lake City, you know, where I live. And yeah. it was, re- I really enjoyed it, but it was still hard to beat that Broadway no, experience. Course, I bet yeah. it was the same way on the West End, too. You know, that's yeah. just, yeah. So, how one. cool. Amazing. All right, sir. 10,000 points. You okay. Uh. Let's go. What is the acronym of the criminal organization featured in the animated Netflix series Carmen San Diego from 29 to the present, based on the computer game series of the same name? Is it Evo? Vile, foul, or bad? So, uh, <laughs> I have never watched this show, uh, and I, I think I think part of it is just because, well, in any iteration, you know, uh, 
and I know that it got revived. Uh, and I would assume that they're using similar, you know, hopefully they're using the similar plot lines from, from the original two. I'm going to need to uh, ask the expert and, uh, and because he's an expert in movies or, you know, shows that are after, you know, <laughs> I think within, within this time frame, mm. I, I'm, going, I'm going to ask him if I could, please. All right, so again, that's what they're for, so let's use this expert. I asked okay. Andrew. Andrew said, I haven't yet seen the show in detail, but I'm 75% sure it's B vile. Okay. <laughs> well, so. he's, he's 75% sure, more sure than I am. So I'm going to say B vile. Final um, answer, and if I go out on this one, I will. I, I still will have been grateful for the chance to be here. <laughs> I said, "Go out with honor." <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, you have any? No idea. You asked Andrew. He was seventy-five percent sure it was vile. If it's if it is, you keep going. If it's not, it was nice having you. Your answer is. Correct. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. So yeah, in the um, in the so I since I grew up in the nineties, this was very important in my childhood. Yes, Most of absolutely. The, the video, the computer games I played, I played almost all of them, and uh, Vile does exist in the games. And then they made two. I know you don't like PBS shows, but they made two PBS live action game shows where in the world's current san diego and where in time is current san diego and then in the 90s i think fox made an animated current san diego where in where on earth i think is Carmen san diego and then now we have this netflix show and vile has returned <laughs> have you have you watched this netflix revival and and if so how is it i did i was lucky to have um i got a free uh three months subscription of netflix so i used it to watch this and i, I loved it um oh, it's, good. it's an amazing show uh i there are there are some things that i like about older the older shows better but um from what i have here it's it the animation is great i love the characters and i want to know more about what happens i feel there's not there is elements of the base in Carmen San Diego originally was meant to teach like geography and stuff. Right. And this show there, there is that, but it's, it's not as heavy hitting as it used to be. So I think I would have liked it to be a bit more focused on the uh, geography, gotcha. but, but I mean, and it tells a great story though. So, yes. So, so like in this oh. picture, these five, they're the, um, the henchmen, the, the main leaders of the uh, okay. organization. Of, of, of vile. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> And do you know what vile stands for? Do or, uh, uh, I used to, but uh, I I think that they I'll give look it, it up. Yeah, they, they give it a new I, th I think a new um uh, definition in this show. Uh, okay, so I for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fine. No, I, I I know lots of people that have a lot of fondness for the show. I mean, that's why I think it got revived on, or you know, do I got the revival on Netflix as well, right? It's, exactly. it's, it's really a beloved show. Yeah, I think it was just it's just an age thing. You know, yeah, yeah, was, yeah it was wasn't. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, just, you weren't playing computer games in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, sir, you are doing amazing. You had to use a lifeline, but that's what they're for. Uh, Three thousand points. For it. Let's go. Which actor voices the Blue Falcon in the animated twenty twenty Warner Animation Group film Scoob? Today, Matt Damon, B Ben Stiller, C Ryan Reynolds, or D Mark Wahlberg. Is this a better question? This is a good question because uh, I uh, I just did a little homework on Scoob. I I didn't because I, I know it went straight to video. I mean, not straight to video, straight to digital download. Yeah. Uh, because of of uh, the pandemic, oh. and uh, I remember it had a pretty interesting voice cast. And um, I'm tempted to take the 50-50, although I think I'm doing the 50-50 myself because I think it's either A, Matt Damon, or D, Mark Wahlberg. And, and uh, I just can't um, remember. Uh, I know, if, well, I really don't think it's Ben Stiller. Ryan Ryan Reynolds is I know he's always working and doing stuff, but I just don't. I thought it was either Matt Damon or Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, take your time. We could use a fifty-fifty, or you could ask the expert. 
or take a guess? <laughs> no, I'm tempted to take a guess, although I don't want to knock myself out of contention on it. But if you would take a guess, what are you leaning towards? Uh, Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Um, but, but uh, Matt Damon. Uh, I the thing is, I just I mean, it's it's a hard one, as you know, Ibrahim, because I don't want to like use my thing you know my my lifelines flippantly because i think i might need them down the road yeah. for, a, for a harder question but i also don't want to get knocked out yeah like we said if you get you can't lose now or you won't yeah win. exactly so um you know uh oh i hate to do it but i i think i better ask andrew that your final answer uh, yeah, I'll, I'd like to. I'd like to ask ask Andrew. All right, you're gonna use your second, your last expert for the show. Yeah, after the game and uh, Andrew, we asked him. He said, "Blue Falcon is voiced by Mark Wahlberg." Okay, so I should have gone with with my gut, but I guess it's good to get that extra thing, even though it's probably gonna come by me later. So I'm gonna go with D. Mark Wahlberg. Final answer. You were leaning towards Mark Wahlberg. Andrew yeah. said the same thing. Your answer is. Correct. Okay. Did you watch Scoop? I didn't get a chance to yet because uh, um, I didn't get it downloaded from wherever it's downloaded. I have a Boomerang um, subscription. I'm hoping that it gets its way to Boomerang. Oh, I hope so too. Then, then, yeah. I'll, then I'll wait to watch it there. Yeah. But this, I was looking forward to this because it was um, supposed to be, it will be the first well, a th- animated Scooby-Doo film in theaters. Yes. In but, theaters, exactly. But then after hearing people's reviews of it, I'm I'm kind of glad he didn't go. Well, theaters, but... that's how I felt, and I thought I was kind of mm-hmm. sad about it because I just thought, wow, that's so cool that there's going to be a Scooby Doo movie in theaters. But mm-hmm. it just sounds like the, the I mean, the animation looked fine, but it sounded like the script was there was yeah. real problems. I mean, with the the director Tony Servone, he's he's done some directed some of those direct to video Scooby Doo films and I'm yes. a big I'm a big fan of the series, but I a lot of them are not great. <laughs> so yeah. I mean there's, yeah. there's some I really love, but I, I I'll be honest, a lot of them are not all that great. Yes. So, I mean that just yeah that was my issue there. <laughs> well thanks again to Andrew <laughs> for thanks, saving, Andrew. Me, saving me. I got another question. <laughs> that, was, that was your last expert, but you still have the 50-50. I still have the 50-50. Here's the 32,000. You get this right, you have that, and also you'll get this. What's the question if you get it right? Okay. So let's go. 32,000 points. Which of the following animated Don Bluth films features a character named Gnorka? Today, a troll in Central Park. B, Thumbelina. C, the Pebble and the Penguin. Or do you rock a doodle? So, um, I am not a Don Bluth aficionado. Uh, uh, aficionado, yeah. I'm just not. I mean, I mean, aware, I'm aware of his films, and I think many I've seen, but uh, you know, many I haven't, and I don't know the answer to this question. So, the. Uh, and I don't know if a 50 50 is going to help me because I'm going to, this one, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm going to have to guess. So, True. but if, if you uh, do 50 50, at least you're guessing from two rather than. Yeah, four. rather than, because, because my two would be given, just given that it's, it seems to be very much a, a fantasy type name. Uh, I would go with the, you know, A, a troll in Central Park or B, Thumbelina. Okay. Uh, the Pebble and the Penguin and Rockadoodle, as I recall, Speaking of current day, we're kind of set more in a, you know, in a modern life situation. I could be wrong on that, but that's as I, that's how I remember them. And same with, you know, a troll in Central Park, I think. However, because there's a troll, Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a, you know, that just seems like such a troll name. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, I better, I better, you know, go with the 50-50 here. And see if I at least I'm in the ballpark, and then I then I'll have to make a make a guess. I'll have to make a guess. Is yeah. that final? 50 50 is final. Yeah. All right. You can use your last lifeline for now and get rid of two wrong answers for you. A troll in Central Park with them. <laughs> 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 I swear that wasn't planned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm glad at least I was thinking, you know, kind of in the same same uh 
same direction. So, um, like I said, if you lose, you um, you can't you can't win. So you might as well take a guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know, um, I can't remember who like the supporting characters are in Thumbelina, either. But the name Gnorga, you know, sounds so much like some kind of a troll name. So uh, I could I could regret it, but I'm going to say a a troll in Central Park final answer. That's All right, guess. you're leaning towards it, and if it's right, keep going. If not, your leg, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 off. Is Correct. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I yeah. live to tell another day, another yeah. question. You have 32,000 wow. no matter what, and you also have that switch the question lifeline from now on. Have you so, yeah, seen get, this movie? Yes, and till date, this is the my least favorite anime movie I've ever seen. <laughs> So <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's, this, this is Ganorga. She's like the. You're right. She's a troll. She's like the queen of the trolls. Okay. And she's voiced by Cloris Leachman. But yeah, up to oh, date. Okay. I mean, I I haven't seen anything. You know, like those um. You know, those ripoff movies. You know, like Ratatouille and stuff like that. I haven't watched yes. any of those. So this movie is the the worst one that I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I I remember hearing it. Just was really not good and so yeah. I, I didn't see it and yeah. and I, uh yeah i'm not a, i'm not a fan of don bluth like you know but even no almost everyone says this movie is bad, <laughs> <It's> bad. <laughs> yeah. so i guess i shouldn't feel too bad that i don't know this character exactly. but still <laughs> yeah and, uh, i mean i'm sure she has a fandom somewhere but yeah. right exactly <laughs> everyone has a fandom yes that's so right, true so all right, sir. So okay, you're two Moving on. You're two away from where, if you get it right, you will tie for first place. Okay, and you have that switch the question. So keep that okay, sixty-four thousand. Let's go. In which animated DreamWorks animation film do Jade zombies appear? Is this a Kung Fu Panda Three, Sinbad: Legend of the Seven Seas, The Road to El Dorado, or Kung Fu Panda Two? Oh, you know. Um... I don't know this either. I've seen all these films, but I cannot, but I, you know, honestly, I saw them all once. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't think I've ever, maybe I've seen one of these Kung, Pan, Kung, Kung Fu Panda movies more than once, but so, um, you know, Jade, oh, but then the Sinbad in there. Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I can't remember. I, um, I don't know. And I would guess I probably, well, my guess, frankly, would probably be, be Sinbad Legend of the Seas, but I think I'm probably going to use my switch. lifeline and, and switch the question. That's your final um, answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. Cause I, I, I literally, I truly don't know. Okay, so we'll switch the question, but for if you had to take a guess, you would say Sinbad. Yeah, that's my. That's just my guess. Just I know J Jade is a kung. It's like a kung fu pan. You know, I mean, it's a Chinese thing. I know, but I can't remember zombies being in the kung fu panda movies. If you uh, told me Sinbad, final answer, you've been wrong. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a good yeah. thing. It it what actually movie? it was kung fu panda three actually. It, well, okay. Yeah. The so, um the 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 Jade zombies were what the um the villain voiced by J.K. Simmons what he used he used the Jade uh, to turn the the other legends into like green they call them jam zombies right. Jade zombies that's right <laughs> uh, see I'm so glad I, I yeah good thing you that. didn't do that I know we'll see how we'll see how I do on this one this one well sir you're all out of lifelines but yeah that's right that's, I'm on my own you're on your own. But let's see how you do. Let's see Here if I go. another sixty-four thousand music in your soup was intended to be a song in which animated Disney canon film before eventually being cut? Today, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Cinderella, Peter Pan, or the Aristocats. Well, you know, I am so glad I did this because 
I, I believe this, I believe I know this answer. So, uh, you know, you know how much I uh, love the Disney canon. Exactly. So my, uh, I, 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 I believe I've seen storyboards or some, or rough animation for the scene. And it was from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And then eventually, I think getting cut just because it wasn't necessarily essential to the plot, I think. And, and uh, it's, et cetera, et cetera. So I, uh, I'm going to go for it, Ibrahim, and say, A, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, final answer. You sound very happy that you switched the question. Well, I feel very grateful, but we'll see. I guess the, this proof is on the screen here. Proof is in the pudding or on the screen? Yes. The answer is the correct. Oh. Congratulations. Oh. One more, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching this. I think, remember when they made those Platinum Edition DVDs yes. for the first time? This, and, that's what I, I saw this, yeah, too. That's, that's why I saw this for the first time, too. Yeah, I think, if I remember correctly, it was, I think, Ward Kimball, I think, might have been the animator. And then Walt Disney gave him Jiminy Cricket in Pinocchio to make up for cutting this. For cutting the scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could be mistaken about who it was. Yeah, but but I think I know. I, I think I think you're on right mm -hmm. on. So uh, it's 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 a fun scene, but yeah, I can see why you know not not essential. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Particularly after the uh, the wash song, whatever that uh, you little, know. Little, 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 little. I love that. Yes. Oh, I love it, and and it's kind Skip of like the, the water same and thing. rubbing your face and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, sir. Here's the one twenty five thousand. You have to get this right to tie for first yeah. place. Okay. You have no yeah. lifelines. That's I, right. You can't so even switch. I'm, on my, I'm on my own. You're literally on your own this time. But at least it's Disney one. Which animated film? Adam, which American film director narrates the animated nineteen eighty five Disney canon film The Black Cauldron? To A. Stanley Donen, B. David Lean, C. John Huston, or D. Richard Fleischer. So. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you and Rachel cover Black Cauldron yet on your um, no. podcast? Okay, okay. <laughs> <No. laughs> or if we if we have, I've forgotten it because it's a film like I really don't like. Yeah. But uh, um, I uh, I'm gonna get I'm gonna guess because yeah, you say guess, you yeah. say Amer right? I mean, of course, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because you say American film director, um, so that kicks out David Lean because I believe David Lean is is a brand. Uh, I don't think Stanley Donnan, I just don't ever remember Stanley Donnan being involved in, in a, in a project with, with, with Disney animation, particularly in the eighties. Maybe he, maybe he, you know, does some stuff back in the fifties, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I just don't think it was Richard Fleischer either. So, uh, and, and also John Houston has got such a great voice. I really do think he was alive. I think he was alive. Or maybe it was like in the latter part of his life, but um, you know, I, I'm so as I said, I have to guess. So I'm going to go with with C, and, and also John Houston has such a wonderful voice too. So I'm going to go with C, John Houston, final answer, and we'll see if I'm right. <laughs> Fingers uh, crossed. Here it is, Stanford. You need this one uh, to tie for first. I place. need this one. Is it John Houston? Your answer is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. yeah congratulations oh You're... thank you i can't believe it Ibrahim. i can't believe it i i'm i'm i i have faith in you congratulations <laughs> well thank you what do you think of the black cauldron uh, it's not my least favorite in the canon but i mean it's it's <laughs> it has a reputation for a reason <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked I liked Ilan Lee a lot when I was a kid, and I thought I, I was felt bad that like Mulan and Pocahontas were considered official princesses, but she wasn't when she actually yeah. introduced herself as princess. Know, she actually <laughs> is a princess. <laughs> exactly. They just have completely ignored her. Yeah, she kind of got forgotten. But and I remember uh, I don't know if you've seen this, but I saw there was like a featurette about the making of I can't remember if it was the making of this film or just. Uh, something in, at Disney Studios, and Haley Mills was hosting this featurette, and she mentioned that she was she was set to voice Ilan in, in the Black Cauldron, but then it looks at but then she didn't, so I, I don't know what happened if she dropped out or. Oh, how interesting! Or yeah, that would have been an interesting yeah. choice. What and here's the, uh, a fun fact: Haley Mills yeah. was a was a voice in the Troll in Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> 
how much he really <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh that's he another question i would i would have missed yeah, exactly <laughs> so, anyway mr houston he was the narrator for this film so okay. congratulations and and uh john hurt wasn't he the voice of the horn king he was does the, that yes. sound right okay. yes he was the, he was the villain the horn king Correct. yeah I right. was I was I was scared that the the, the two answers were or two of the answers were going to be John Hurt and someone else. You know, they'll yeah. be like, oh, isn't he? <laughs> I thought he was the Horn King, but maybe he was the narrator too. Oh, uh, no worries. All right, so like I said, like I said, um, you're tied right now as long as okay. you keep it. But if you if you win this one, you will take over the lead. So, okay. Two fifty thousand. You only three two three away from the million. Yeah, wow. Which of the following is not one of the Sherman Brothers songs featured in the animated 1973 Hanna Barbera film Charlotte's Web? I can talk. We've got lots in common. Mother Earth and Father Time. I've known you all my life, which is not. So, um, I've seen this movie, mm-hmm. and uh, it's 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 sure a cute movie, and it has been years. So, so um, I. Uh... So, like I said, I'm since, just guessing here. Since yes, you could take a guess and get it right. If you get it wrong, you won't win. If you get it right, you keep going. If you walk away now, you you you're not winning, but you're tied for first I'm tied. place. And yeah, I might have to use. Um, I have certain requirements I use to break the tie. To, so. Okay. And you may be at number one or not. I have to look back at what those requirements were. But okay, then that's where you are right now. So you could walk away, or you could give it, take a chance at this. <laughs> take a chance. And remember that there's still one more contestant back from you. So right. So right. that person, that person could take it. Could could could, could, mm-hmm. could totally could totally win. Yeah. So, um, I, I swear I have seen something. And maybe it was a Sherman Brothers movie, uh, but Mother Earth and Father Time seems to be from an, possibly from another film. Uh, the but then also that I've known you all my life. Those A and B both sound like they could be from that story. From Charlotte's Web. Uh, and C and D sound odd, sound D, out of it. Like uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I was gonna say, I mean, if the, I'm so I'm, I'm I'm trying to pick between C and D, and I mean, I don't I don't want wish to lose, but then I kind of want to go for it. Yeah, <laughs> you it, know? it, 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 I mean, because it's, it's your it's, game, it, right? <laughs> and and uh, um, but again, this is it's such a it's just a it's gonna be a complete guess. I sure wish I could remember what Mother Earth and Father Time. Which were. which one? Or which one would you guess if you were to guess? Well, I I would guess C, Mother Earth and Father Time. Um, in fact, you know I am gonna go for it, and uh, if you know again, if I lose, uh, I lose. And kudos to to uh, your 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 great contestant who who uh, hit that. 375 you know <laughs> c- c- combined score john yeah i'm gonna say see mother earth father at father time final answer final answer all right yeah yeah you're leaning towards c and d you get this right keep going you get it wrong it was nice having you your answer is yeah, just a pure guess wrong yeah i'm I, so sorry that's okay no i'm <laughs> glad i went for it what which was what, what one was it it was d i've known you all my life okay <laughs> yeah so i <laughs> so I've, I've known you all my life is a song from another sherman brother animated movie it's called the mighty kong they did they did an animated king kong movie in the 90s oh yeah okay there. yeah so mother earth and father time is from charlotte's web it's a it's like a lullaby that charlotte sings oh, to that's yeah. you know so. Yeah, okay. Well, I I hope that the Charlotte's Web fans will forgive me. For that. <laughs> I don't think I don't I don't think the fandom is pretty strong right now, so you should be fine. <laughs> I should be fine. I just wonder how many people have seen it. You know, clearly it's been forever for me. So, 
Exactly. Anyway, you leave with 32,000. So hey. you have a, wh- a whopping total score of 125 plus 32 is what, 158,000? Am I doing the math correctly? Well, whatever it is, that's what you have. It's a that's what I score, have. And, but... I, and, I, and I didn't win, but I still had a blast. And I, I, you know, I'm glad at least I went for it. I mean, I'm disappointed, of course, I didn't get it right. But. No, I, I feel I would have done this. When you get that high, you you kind of want to take a guess and you accept whatever comes. Afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Particularly given the stakes, right? I mean, that there was no, I mean, exactly. nothing else. To, yeah. All and, right. And before we go, is there anything else you want to say or how can people find you online? Ah, oh, well, you're nice to ask. So as I mentioned, uh, I've got a blog, uh, moviespastandpresent.com. And I'm also on on uh, Instagram at movies pap. That's where I put a lot of uh, a lot of my content. And then uh, Twitter at Stanford Clark. Nice. I'll put links to all those below afterwards. Thank you. And for everyone else watching, we have one more contestant to end off uh, season uh, six with. Will Ben make it and win the game, or was Sean going to be our uh, winner? Tune in next time to find out. Until then, take care. Bye.